So this is a CSX freight train trussle. It's part of the Beltline route, and it's active freight train route as well. I happen to be a freight train conductor for CSX, and this is the route that I run. I run about 20, 30 trains a day, and actually, there's a train coming now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So before this new trestle and bridge and walkway was built, yeah, you used to have to walk along here, underneath the trestle, along these rocks, and it was a little bit hairy. You know, you didn't really feel secure. And uh, this new bridge is definitely a lot better for the community to get from one side to the other. My name's Angel Lewis Poventude, and I lead tours all over the Beltline. Down the now, I've walked the entire 22-mile loop about eight times, and there are sections that I've walked 30 and 40 times. You know, it's an old abandoned freight corridor. So you get out there, and you don't know where you're at. You actually get lost mentally because there's no street grid. You're walking below and under 80% of the established network of the city. The corridor is about 22 miles around, and so there's different sections of, that you walk through that are wooded, industrial, raised, lowered, swampy, dry, it's pretty neat. It hits 45 neighborhoods, so as you're walking it, you're actually going through people's backyards. What's important about the Atlanta Valley Line is, first and foremost, the connectivity between neighborhoods. Atlanta's a city that grew up really in the last 50 years, primarily behind the wheel of a car. Atlanta's sort of the poster child for pedestrian and bicycle problems because Atlanta was built during the era when the car was king and it was built for the car. All the buildings and roads and the cars moving back and forth, all crisscross in every which way. Mommy says nobody walks the streets of downtown Atlanta anymore. You're either riding in a car or walking across the bridge between the buildings and the sky. It is horrible, the traffic in the city of Atlanta. People have seen that and they understand that. So now you've got people moving back into the city, wanting to live into the city, wanting to live into communities that they can get around. The infrastructure in Atlanta did not include sidewalks for years and years and years. You, you could develop a whole community, thousand homes, and not build one foot of sidewalk. It's been a long time since we built in a grid pattern. Most, most uh, Atlanta, at least, is, is developed by cul-de-sac. So you wouldn't necessarily get to know the people in the cul-de-sac next to you. What our trails have done is utilize that green space in between all these cul-de-sac neighborhoods, and people pour out from all the different cul-de-sac neighborhoods and begin to socialize and begin to walk together. But we feel like it's been a healthy thing from a mental standpoint as well and, and getting uh, people to, uh, to neighbor more, if you will. The Atlanta Belt Line is arguably the most ambitious and comprehensive urban redevelopment project in the country right now. And what it's doing is taking four different historic freight railroad corridors known as Belt Lines 100 years ago and piecing them back together into a loop around the city of Atlanta connecting 45 different neighborhoods via transit, parks, trails, affordable housing, art, and even a linear arboretum. How you doing? We're on the South Peachtree Creek Trail. And all these leaves came down in yesterday's rainstorm. It usually, it usually is blown off a lot better than this. There's a squirrel sitting on the handrail for you. This park is one of our larger parks that we are building along the Beltline. And you're going to be able to walk on the Beltline to this park, not crossing any streets.
Where we're standing right now is in the old historic Fourth Ward, which is one of our most important historic neighborhoods, one of our largest neighborhoods too. It's really uh, kind of the birthplace of the civil rights movement here in Atlanta. Dr. King uh, was born just a few blocks over my shoulder here. This community has really rallied around and been involved in what is happening here because it's really important for this neighborhood and this community because we have a large number of single moms with children who live in this neighborhood and this community. So it allows for them to have a space for their children to play. The section that we're standing in was industrial and not used. I mean, it was a, a no man's land in a lot of ways. Fences, kudzu, a forgotten space. We're coming up on one of my favorite parts of the park, and there's a, it's kind of a cove with rocks that are built to sit on, lay on. I'm actually gonna show you my favorite rock. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this rock. So, I mean, you can imagine, you know, if you have a book, reading, taking a little nap. Um, this is a really special rock. And I, I mean, I, you know, I can't own it, but I hope I have access to it a lot. As we come around to this, southern end of phase one of Fourth Ward Park. There's a stage area and seating that will hold between three to 500 people. There'll be grass on the shelves of the seating. You can have storytelling, um, music, symphony, plays, endless, really endless possibilities. Uh, my birthday coming up soon. <laughs> I mean, I, this is, you know, this is where we're gonna wanna be. This is, this is a park. It's a game changer. You know, it's, um, it changes what people are gonna expect from the city in parks as we move forward. A very good friend of mine told me once that when we move at faster than walking speed, we're not actually processing what's going on around us. If you think about driving in a car or flying in an airplane and you get to your destination, your brain's still trying to catch up because your mind can only process at three or four miles an hour. That's what we've been doing for all of our existence as humans. And to not acknowledge that, to not really embrace the importance of walking and walking speed is, is kind of silly. It's, it's kind of silly.